if I hadn't taken part in the cytosponge trial, I think I would certainly have lost my esophagus and I quite likely have lost my life. My name is Rebecca Fitzgerald. I'm Professor of Cancer Prevention at the University of Cambridge and I um, lead a research programme in early detection of cancer and in particular cancer of the esophagus. I'm Liz Chipchase and I was lucky enough to take part in a clinical trial of a device called Cytosponge. The device that was described to me in the letter sounded really rather intriguing. Uh, I think it was described as a pill on a string. So it can be done in an office setting, doesn't need any special equipment. Um, you need one person to deliver the test, usually a nurse, and it's a little capsule on a thread. All you have to do is swallow a pill, uh, wait until the capsule that surrounds it dissolves, and this releases a, a sponge which expands slightly in your stomach and then it's pulled up through the esophagus collecting cells as it goes. You get between one and four million cells on that sponge that then you just send to the lab um, and then we're going to spin the cells off and do our test to make those cells kind of stand out. It's an antibody test makes them stain brown. There are patients that stick in your mind, and Liz Chipchase is one of those. So she took the cytosponge test, and we were a bit worried about what we saw. I think I was called up for an endoscopy some six weeks later, and it was at that point that I began to realise things weren't very healthy in my esophagus. And then, about a week later, I met Professor Fitzgerald for the first time, when she had the not very nice task of telling me that I had esophageal cancer. I mean, obviously it's not good news that she had an early cancer, but it was very fortuitous because we'd found it early and who knows what would happen. But if we hadn't done this trial, maybe we wouldn't have found it. The cancer cells were still on the surface of my esophagus, which meant that they could be removed by a relatively simple process called an endoscopic resection. I, in fact, needed two resections about three months apart. Uh, so that was two mornings spent in outpatients and I was then actually cancer-free. Right at the beginning, I was motivated by the patients I met that I thought it could be different. Then you have a patient who you diagnose like Liz, and there have been others too, and that is what keeps you going. Times are changing, and people realise that, yes, of course, the therapy is hugely important, but actually the diagnosis is really important. And now we have tools that we were just never dreamt of. I think anyone who has suffered from cancer and recovered probably takes a very different outlook on life. You're determined to make the most of every, every opportunity you have. And I'm a great walker and I'm a nature lover. And I must say that quite often on those occasions I do, I say a silent thank you to all the, all the scientists who've worked away in developing this technique. And none of this work would have happened without the contribution of the public, not only donations, but also participation in the trials, people willing to come along and try, take part, spread the word, tell their friends. So it's hugely important, and I'm incredibly grateful. <laughs>